Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your Metals Market Wrap Up for this Monday, July 20th, 2020. I'm back stitched up like mad in my foot. I had a bad issue. I uh, can't move a lot right here, but at least I'm standing and we'll see how I can do with this. We broke out today, obviously, in the silver market. You're into the 2030s right now. Copper market holding up, platinum holding up. So it's the base metals doing exceptionally well, moving actually more than the gold. Now, don't get me wrong. Gold is still doing fine, but gold wasn't the action. It was the gold-silver ratio and the silver specifically that took off to the upside. Part of that comes with help from a falling dollar, which is seems to be entrenched in a bear market. Pretty much sideways action in the energies today. Bonds and notes still getting bids, if you will, in them. And remember, we have central banks coming out this week giving us their monetary policy through next week with ours next week, the FOMC meeting. So we'll see what it all is going to brew then. As we take a look at a weekly chart, we're up for the week about $8 so far. You can see how the market's gone up, and this is a new high close on this chart in quite a while. So very positive action. When you take a look, though, at the daily bar chart, you can see we're still caught in this overall sideways action in the August gold. The pattern is bullish because you still have higher lows, higher highs. So the trend is up. I define a trend off the swing line. Higher highs, higher lows is bullish. Uptrend, lower highs, lower lows, bearish. Downtrend, you filter it with the 18-day average. And yes, you could have a higher high and a lower low, no trend at all. So, so far the trend up, the bias up is the market's over the 18-day average of closes. And resistance, well, we've seen it all the way through. It's the upper Bollinger Band in that 1831 zone. So support comes in close to the 1801 zone. We have been playing in this general area for about a week and a half, as you can see. Is the market going to resolve itself to the upside? I don't know. You're just playing overbought. If it were embedded, were both numbers that make up the slow stochastic. They're called a K and a D line, the red and the blue. If they're going sideways for several days or more over 80, they're embedded. They lock in. When they're just like this, it's an overbought market into a resistance potential, maybe into the 1831 zone with support at 1801.10. More important to me is because you're overbought, I don't think you're going to attract a lot of fresh money buying the gold right here. You have to have a reason. What broke out to the downside was this ratio. So the gold-silver ratio has now gone from the 125 level back under 90 for the very first time. And as you can see, silver did great. Now, I think the pros took some money off the table today at the upper Bollinger Band. Why not? They have the embedded reading. The market has come down and let them out up here. I think the market will get bought. This is the one I think will get bought on the breaks. And until you lose the red line uh, closing back under 80, I look for this market on pullbacks to be very, very well supported. The copper market's been in a corrective action. You've had a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. That's not a bull trend. That's a downtrend, which is fully countered because prices have stayed over the 18-day average of closes. This is what I'm wondering about. When you generally lose an embedded reading, just like you did here, here's both numbers over 80. Do you see that? And you've been staying over 80. When you lose it, it's not unusual for price and the 18-day average to make a run at each other or the next major moving average. And in this case, that's the one. It hasn't done that yet. I'm just wondering if the pros aren't putting out sells. I know that sounds nutty to some people, with stops over this high, trying to get back to that number. What supported, I think, silver today over copper was in Peru, a, a silver mine owned by the company called American closed down today because of COVID cases. I think that blew that market up, and we've been seeing that go on in the copper, as we're seeing in Chile, different mine unions saying, no, we're not going to work in those COVID conditions you're totally sideways in the platinum. I think you can see that bordered by these black dashed lines, Bollinger Bands. You normally trade within them 95% of the time. The exciting piece of news is, is this a base or a top? We'll let the market tell us. Uh, right now, you have a pattern of a lower low, a higher high, neutral, caught by those bands with flat momentum. 
when I come to the Palladium market, you had a much narrower set of bands right here when I had to take off for my surgery. This was uh, Ju July 8th, okay. So the market coming up, challenging the 100-day average, the upper Bollinger Band, and right here is where the market starts moving out to the upside. And the market gets thrown back under the Bollinger Band, still fighting its battle there. But what's it really doing? It's pushing out and trying to create a bit wider berth for these two bands. That's what I think it's really trying to do. There's nothing bearish on this, and there is bullishness about it in the sense that you have higher lows, higher highs, and you keep locking into that number. Now, you are overbought. You need to embed. What else is happening? Keep your eye on the 18-day average and the 100. You're about to get a bullish crossover. Traders will focus on that. Unfortunately, the margin in Palladium is like $45,000, $50,000 a contract. I don't have any clients that trade it, but it's good to watch it because you get an idea of other what I'll call the base metals even though you might call that a precious metal I certainly would the dollar index keeps the fuel alive now gold in other currencies has been making highs for a while it's now starting to take leadership against the dollar because yes you can buy currencies Dennis Gartman was famous for that he'd own gold versus the euro and versus the Swiss franc and other currencies and there's a way to do it it's very convoluted. I find it easier, you're long, you're short, what are you? But I do understand as the dollar's falling, the market is dropping back, and I do pay good attention to that. Now during the day, as I'm looking at when you get a metal market like uh, silver that exploded today, where are the potential support and resistance zones? A tool that I use is called Pivot Points. It's been around a long time. I'm certainly not the founder of this. I know the first person I learned it from, and uh, that had to be, in all honesty, 40 years ago. So this has been around. In fact, that particular person used to take managed money based on this tool. And I was shocked at how well he did until people understood the tool. He had something nobody else really grasped. Nothing always keeps going. You know that. The game changes on you. It'll change on all these, uh, if you will, these algo traders too. It changes. I've been around this long enough to know it. But to get the video series, and it is free, simply go to our website at www.irapstein.com. Under the word, you'll, you'll see, not research, but free offerings. That's where you'll see this. You can call my staff. They'll be happy to work with you as well. I'm Ira. You have a great day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.